All right, my pre-calculus kids. We are looking at section 4.3, operations of functions today. Um, they are compositions of functions. We're going to fog a little. We're going to goff a little. And then we're actually going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. So we're going to do all sorts of different things, operations, with functions today. So when you see this F with an open circle and then a G, kind of looks like the word fog, um, it's talking about this, f of g of x. And what you're going to do is you're going to evaluate what g of x is, and then you're going to plug that into the f function. So the g function goes into the f function. And if you see it the other way around, goff, then the f function is going into the g function, that, and that equates to g of f of x. Now these are the same notes that were on the video um, that's supplied by our curriculum, but um, I'm going to take you a little slower through it. I think you went a little bit fast on some of these. So I'm going to kind of take it slow so that it makes a little bit more sense, hopefully, for you. All right, first of all, they didn't give us um, functions for these. They didn't fill it in. So f of x, we're going to make it x squared minus 1. And g of x, we're going to make the square root of x. So fill those two in. And then we're going to do three things. We're going to find f of g of 2. We're going to find goff of negative 4. And we're going to find fog. All right, so let's see if we can do that. You always start with the inside parentheses first, so you're going to find g of 2. So you're going to take a 2, you plug it into the g function, you get the square root of x, I mean square root of 2. And then you take the answer from that and plug it into the f function. So you work from the inside out. So I want to know what f of the square root of 2 would look like. So you take the square root of 2, you plug it in here. Well, that's going to be kind of interesting because you've got the square root of 2 squared minus 1. And whenever you square a square root, it gets rid of the root. So now you're at 2 minus 1, and you get an answer of 1. So there's the first one. This one, Goff, remember Goff is the same thing as g of f of x. And so what I'm going to do is find g of f of negative 4, because they put a number in there. So job number one is figure out what f of negative 4 is. Let's see, f of negative 4. If I take a negative 4 and plug it in over here, that's going to be negative 4 squared minus 1, or 16 minus 1, and I get 15. But I'm not done yet because now I need to take that answer and plug it into the g function. So here I go, g of 15. Well, if I put 15 into the g function, here's my g function. It just turns out to be the square root of 15, and you're done. And then the last one is to fog. Fog is equivalent to f of g of x. f of g of x. And notice they didn't give you a number this time. They just left it with an x. So you're going to have to leave it with x's this time as well. So g of x, we know what g of x is. It's the square root of x. So therefore, I want to know what f of the square root of x is. Take a square root of x, plug it into the f function. And when I square a square root, again, it gets rid of the root. So I get x minus 1, and that's my final answer. Then the other thing he discussed was domains. We're never done with domain. I think I told you that from when we first started talking domains, that they're going to come up over and over and over again. So if I go back and I look at my two functions here, and I think domains for these. This guy, now you should start be, being able to visualize what these things look like. And if it's an x squared graph, you should remember that that's a parabola, a quadratic, so parabola. And it's shifted down one. So a parabola down one doesn't have any domain issues. It doesn't have a denominator, and it doesn't have an even root, so his domain is going to be all real numbers. If I come over here to this guy, he's a square root. He is an even root. 
He doesn't have a denominator, but he does have the even root. And whatever's inside has to stay positive. Is greater than or equal to zero because if it goes negative, I get imaginary. So I can't have that. And so my domain for these, when I go and put these two things, now I've got to merge the two things together. Remember, we've talked about that before. If I have all real numbers for this one, and this one can only be greater than or equal to zero, who wins? And it's the inequality that wins. So the domain for this set of functions for my setup here is going to be this guy over here. That the x has to be always greater than or equal to zero, or else I can't fog and goff. It won't work. Because if you think about it, if I take, say, negative 10, if I use negative 10, it's fine here, but it isn't fine here. I wouldn't be able to get any values out of my fogging and goffing. All right, so domain for my fog and goff situation is x is greater than or equal to 0. All right, second one, second set of problems. Now, the, again, he didn't give you the uh, equations. First one is this. It's 3 over x squared minus 5. And the g of x function is the square root of x minus 2. So fill those two things in. And then we're going to try some more. Now, they just the thing is, this time the equ equations got a little bit more complicated. All right, but I still want to find the same types of things. So I want to find f of g of 2. Start with the inside, find g of 2 first. g of 2. Here's my equation for g. I'm putting a 2 in. Square root of 2 minus 2 is the square root of 0, which is just 0. But I'm not done yet, because now I need to take that answer and put it into the f function. So I really ultimately want to know what f of 0 is. Take a 0 and plug it in. 3 over 0 squared minus 5 gives me 3 over negative 5, and that's my answer. If I fog it with an x, in other words, they want me to find f of g of x. I know what g of x is. g of x is the square root of x minus 2. I need to take that answer and put it into the f function. So that's going to be, I want to find f of the square root of x minus 2. And when I plug that into the x into the f of x function, I get 3 over the square root of x minus 2 squared minus 5. Same thing goes when you square a square root, it gets rid of the root. So now you've got 3 over x minus 2 minus 5, or 3 over x minus 7. All right, then last one, they want you to fog a 0. So in other words, I want to find f of g of 0. Where do you start? With the g of 0. Take a 0, plug it into your g function, and you should be like thinking, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. I get the square root of a negative 2. Well, I can't have the square root of negative 2 because that guy is imaginary. And so this one does not exist. You can't go there. You can't even go on to the next step because you get an, you get an imaginary answer, which is where the domains come into play again. So let's think domains for these guys. If I take this 3 over x squared minus 5, and I'm thinking domain, the denominator is not allowed to equal 0. OK, we remember that from the last unit. So I'm going to come into the margin. I want to know when x squared minus 5 equals 0 so I can figure out what the domain is. So I swing the 5 to the other side. x squared equals 5. I square root both sides. I get x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. Well, I know my domain for him is everything else except x can't equal plus or minus the square root of 5. If it were either of those values, if it were square root of 5 or negative square root of 5, then this would be a 0 denominator and can't exist. If 
I come over to this side and think domain, this one is an even root. Even roots have to stay positive. x minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0. And when I swing that 2 over to the other side, I get x is greater than or equal to 2. So it makes sense that if x was 0, it's not going to work in this. Because x is, if x were 0, it's smaller than 2. That's not in the domain. If I put these two domains together, you now you merge them together, I'm thinking that my ultimate domain for fogging and goffing on this one, I can't be a plus or minus the square root of 5. Well, the square root of 5 is about 2.2-ish. So if I'm thinking my, uh, any, start with the inequality, x is greater than or equal to 2, am I going to hit a positive square root of 5? If I start at 2 and go to the right, Am I going to hit 2.2? And yes, I am. So I have to keep x can equal the square root of 5. Let's think about the negative square root of 5, though. If I'm at negative 2.2, does that fit into x is greater than or equal to 2? And it doesn't. It's too small. And so this is my domain for fogging and goffing with this particular set of problems. OK. If I go to the next part, well, actually, let me take you to, let's do a couple problems uh, together that are kind of like this. So if I flip over to the practice problems, because while well, we got this concept in our minds about fogging and goffing, and I look at number seven. Number seven, this is on the practice page. They want me to fog a negative two. I have an f function that's 2 minus x. I have a g function that's 3 minus x. And they want me to fog a negative 2. So I start, remember this is the same thing, equivalent to f of g of negative 2. Think about where you start inside out. So I want to know what g of negative 2 is. I take a negative 2 and I plug it into the g function. So I have the square root of 3 minus a negative 2. That gives me the square root of 5, 3 plus 2. And now I want to know, working my way out, what's f of the square root of 5? Take a square root of 5 and plug it into the f function. It's going to be ugly, 2 minus the square root of 5, but that's what it is. That's your final answer. So you have just fogged a negative 2 with those equations. Now notice the directions. They say find the indicated value if it exists given these two functions. It didn't ask for the domain. So in this case, you didn't have to do that. Other problems are going to ask for the domain. We'll do one in just a second. All right, I want to swing down to number 10 because number 10 is a little bit different because now they did not give you um, equations. They gave you tables. And so they're saying, here's your f table. Here's your g table. Figure out what fog of 4 is. So in other words, again, I want to know what f of g of 4 is. So I go start with g of 4. I want to know what g of 4 is. I go to the g table when x is 4 g of 4 is 6. And then I want to know what f of 6 is. So I go to the f table. When x is 6, f of 6 is negative 10. That's your final answer. So from a table, that's how they're read. And then I want to look at number 13 before I show you a different type of problem. 13 is next. Again, in the practice problems. 13. So I have two functions. I have x plus 2 as my f function. My g function is 1 over x. Directions say find fog of x and goff of x and find their domains. So this one involves the domains again. All right, if I'm fogging. 
then I'm finding f of g of x. Start with g of x. Notice these are x's and not numbers, so I'm going to keep it with my equation. So my g of x is 1 over x. And when I take that and put it into the f function, I want to know what f of 1 over x is. So I take 1 over x and I put it into the f equation, and there it is. And then the question is, all right, well, what's the domain of that? And so I do have a fraction, and I know my denominator is not allowed to equal 0. So if x equals 0, that causes a 0 denominator. So my answer is x equal, can't equal 0. Now, you can also say, um, and I think we did this in some of our problems uh, previously, all real numbers, comma, x can equal 0. This is saying it can be everything, but it can't be 0. But even without this, it's saying it can't be 0. So you can write it just as x equal, can't equal 0, or you can keep it with all real numbers, but it can't be 0. It's kind of being redundant. They're saying the same thing. So whichever way you like, it's your preference. You don't have any even roots, so you don't have to worry about that with domain. All right, now I'm golfing. So now I'm doing g of f of x. So I start with the f of x. f of x is x plus 2. And I'm going to put that x plus 2. I want to know what g of x plus 2 is. So I will be 1 over x plus 2. I have a fraction, my denominator can't equal 0. So I think about when x plus 2, when would it equal 0? And that would be when x equals negative 2, and that's what it can't be, is x equals negative 2. All right, we're going to go back to the note page, and we're going to continue on with a different type of problem. These are called decomposition of functions, and what we're doing is we're undoing the fog. <laughs> Go figure that, right? So if I'm h of x, h of x is what I get after I have f of g of x, after I have fogged. So if I fog, I get the answer. And you can see here's an example. Here's an h of x where there's two functions involved. There's a f of x function and a g of x function. And when I fog them, put g into f, I'm going to get this as a result. And by the way, there are multiple correct answers to this, and I'm going to show you that in just a minute. This was mind-blowing to some students in class today. It was kind of fun. All right, so I have two functions. If I look at this, I have an x cubed plus 1 function, and I have a square root function. And so then the question is, which one's which? Now, I have to put g into f, and so the combination that works with that is to make g your x cubed plus 1 and make f your square root of x. Which, by the way, this comes really easy to some students and really hard to others. So it's kind of one of those hit or miss types of things. But if I take x cubed plus 1 and put it into the f function, I get this square root. Now let me show you another option that came up in class today, which was kind of interesting. Let me just change the color of my pen here. One person said, how about if I had this? Would this work? What if the f function were x plus 1 and the g function was x cubed? Well, let's think about that. If I take x cubed and put it in here for the x, am I going to get the h of x that I want? And the answer is yes. So there's an alternate correct answer that I can take x cubed plug it in for this x, I get x cubed plus 1 square rooted, and that's what I wanted originally. So you can see there's multiple correct answers for these. When I grade these on a test or quiz, I'm going to have to be really careful and check them all out for how you put it in. All right, second, second example. h of x is, this is after I have fogged, 1 over x squared plus 1. So one of them is probably x squared plus 1. And one of them is the fraction, 1 over x. So think for a minute how that would go. 
I need my f function to be 1 over x and my g uh, function to be x squared plus 1 because when I take x squared plus 1 and plug it in for the x in my f function, I will have 1 over x squared plus 1. So you're decomposing, you're, uh, you're taking it apart and figuring it out. Um, also, again, don't forget there's multiple correct answers. Okay, um, last thing, with uh, that's pretty much it with the Foggin and Goffin. We are going to do operations with functions. You can add functions, subtract them, multiply them, or divide them. So I'm going to show you some notations that are used. This last set of boxes is at a point, and we're going to use x equals 2 as our point to do that last set of boxes. So if you want to add functions, you're going to see this notation, f plus g. You might see it as f plus g in parentheses with an x in parentheses. And if it's at a point 2, you might see it look like this. All of those mean, all right, add them up. Same thing goes with subtraction, f minus g, f minus g of x, f minus g of 2. They're all subtraction notations. If I want to multiply, sometimes you'll see a dot in the middle, sometimes you won't. You might just see an f and a g put next to each other. You might see them again with a solid dot in the middle. This would be f times g of x. This one would be f times g of 2. And last one is to divide them. That would be f divided by g. It could look like this, f over g of x, or it could be f over g of 2. Again, it's just notation stuff, so no, no big deal. No calculating there. So let's try some op operations. Here they go. These are still in the notes in the uh, example part. They gave you one function this time, woohoo, but they didn't tell you the other one. The other one is 3 minus 5x. So fill that in. We are going to add them. We're going to subtract them, multiply them, and then divide them and talk about the domains of each one. Parentheses are going to be your friend. I would err on the side of using parentheses whenever you can, and you'll see why in a couple minutes. But if I'm f plus g, I'm going to take my f function, 2x squared minus 1, and I'm going to add it with my g function, 3 minus 5x. And then I'm going to combine like terms. So I've got a squared term. I've got nobody other, no other squared terms, so I have a 2x squared. I have a minus 5x. I'm going to try to write it in descending order so it's all pretty. And I've got a negative 1 and a positive 3. That gives me a plus 2 combining like terms. So let's think domain for this. Well, let's go back to domain for the original guys. This is a squared function, so you should be thinking it's a parabola. Um, it's a little vertically stretched, right? We've talked about that, and it's, and it's down one. All right, so putting all those pieces together, does it have any denominators? No, it doesn't. Does it have any even roots, like a square root? And it doesn't. So his domain is all real numbers. He's just a happy parabola g of x, if I think about what that looks like, that just has a power of x to the first power. So that's a linear function. This would look like a line. Do lines have any issues? And they don't. So again, doesn't have a denominator, doesn't have an even root. So my domain for this guy is all real numbers. If I come back to this problem that we just did, find the domain, what's his domain? Well, he's also a parabola. And so he's going to be a domain of all real numbers. Also, just to, as an FYI, remember that all row numbers is the same thing as negative infinity to positive infinity. If you used in interval notation, that's fine too. All right, we're going to come down to the subtraction one. 2x squared minus 1 minus 3 minus 5x. Now, here's where the parentheses are significant because if you didn't have the parentheses there, you wouldn't remember that you have to distribute that negative, which is what I'm going to do before I combine like terms this time. So I'll have a 2x squared minus 1 minus 3 plus a 5x. 
I distributed that subtraction sign throughout that second set of parentheses, and now I'm going to combine like terms. 2x squared plus 5x, this time it's minus 4. Domain. It's a parabola. Still a parabola, has no issues. Domain's all real numbers. All right, now this time is f times g. Now notice it's just a little dot there. It's not the open circle like a fog would be. It's just a regular old dot, meaning multiply those two things together. 2x squared minus 1 has to get multiplied by 3 minus 5x. And so now I'm thinking foliage. All right, so if I think foliage, my firsts, this is a minus sign by the way, my firsts are going to give me a 6x squared. My outers are going to give me a negative 10x cubed. My inners, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. And my last, negative 1 times negative 5x is a positive 5x. Nothing combines on this one. And if I think about what my domain would be for him, he's a cubic function. He doesn't have a denominator. He doesn't have an even root. Um, he looks kind of like a squiggle, right, cubic functions. So his domain is still all real numbers. f over g, division. If I take my f function, 2x squared minus 1, and divide it by my g function, 3 minus 5x, looks like this. There's nothing that factors. There's nothing that I can cancel out, so that's the best I've got. But now I do have a domain issue, because this time I have a denominator involved. And we know denominators are not allowed to be 0, so I need to figure out when that's going to happen. 3 minus 5x equals 0, because that's what it can't be. So if I solve that, negative 5x equals negative 3, swing the 3 to the other side, divide by the negative 5, x equals 3 fifths. That's what it can't be. So my domain is all real numbers, but it can't be this. That is my domain. All right, now how about if you have a number in there? How about in this first case here, find f plus g of 2. And they did finally type in the, the uh, equations for you. f is the square root of x, g is the square root of 5 minus x. I want to know what f plus g of 2 is. There are two ways to do this. I'm going to show you what I find the easiest way first and then I'll show you an alternate way that also works so you can decide which way you like best. All right, so this one, if I t want to find f plus g of 2, I'm going to find f of 2, and I'm going to find g of 2, and then I'm going to add them up. All right, so f of 2, put a 2 right in here, I get a square root of 2. g of 2, put a 2 right in here, square root of 5 minus 2, equals the square root of 3. And then take my two results and add them up. Square root of 2 plus the square root of 3. Now an interesting question came up in class today because somebody asked, can they be combined to, to make the square root of 5? Which was a great question. But the answer is no. You can only combine square roots if they're the same exact root. In other words, say I had, and I'll erase this in a second, Say so I had the square root of 3 plus the square root of 3. They're like roots. They would equal 2 square roots of 3. They can be combined because they're the same root. These guys are not the same root, so you can't do that. So that's your final best answer for that one. Let me take this away. Okay. All right, so I am going to go to, we'll talk domain in a minute. I'm going to show you the other way you could do this. You could f plus g this. If I f plus g this, it's going to be the square root of x plus my f function plus my g function, the square root of 5 minus x. This is what f plus g would equal. And then plug in the 2. So find f plus g first, then plug in the 2. I'll get the square root of 2 plus the square root of 5 minus 2 gives me the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 
and you can see they're the same exact answer. So your story is you can either find two, plug it into the F, plug it into the G, add up the results, or find F plus G and then plug the two in. You're going to get the same answer either way. Alright, domain for this one. Well, let's go back and look at the domain of the original functions. This is the square root of x. You know that roots have to stay positive. So for this one, my domain has to be what's inside has to stay greater than or equal to zero because if it didn't, then you'd be in imaginary territory and you don't want that. This one, my domain, is going to be 5 minus x has to stay positive. In other words, greater than or equal to zero. And if I work my way through this one, this one's a little bit more tricky. I got negative x, as I solve this, is greater than or equal to, bring the 5 to the other side. I just swung the 5 over, became negative. Divide by a negative 1. Now when you divide by a negative 1, that means that you've got to switch the arrow. So now my domain for this part is x is less than or equal to positive 5. Right, divide by a negative 1, got to switch the arrows, x is less than or equal to 5. But then you have to merge these two things together and that's going to be your domain for this piece here. So think about this as if it were a number line. I'm going to draw you a little number line. I'm going to put it, I'll put it right here. I have 0 on my number line and I have 5 on my number line. See this guy's a 0, this guy's a 5. This one is uh, an equal to, so it would be like a solid, it would be a circle or a bracket. And I want where x is greater than 0, so that would be over here. Bigger than 0 would be going in that direction, right? But this one is saying that it has to be less than 5, so that would be a closed circle here going the other way, less than 5. And so if I'm looking at a number line, it would be looking like this. It's everything between 0 and 5. Do you remember how to make a between statement when we did piecewise functions? So we had the smaller number, 0, on the left. We had the bigger number on the right. You have an x in the middle. And then you use less than or equal to signs for both places. Now again, a discussion came out in class today about um, I thought it had to be greater than 0. And really it is, because if I just look at that much of it, I have that much of the equation, that's saying x is greater than or equal to 0. Where this side is saying x is less than or equal to 5. So you really are saying the same thing by using those less than signs in the middle of that. There's your domain. That one's a lot more complicated, right? If your f over g, ready to divide these, it's going to be the square root of x, f, divided by the square root of 5 minus x. Nothing cancels, and I still have this merged uh, domain, but there's one issue. There's one little tweaking that I need to do. Because if I have a denominator here, my denominator is not allowed to equal 0. So think about the number that's going to cause that to equal 0. If x were 5, and the way I'm getting that is by taking that 5 minus x, setting it equal to 0. Um, so negative x equals negative 5, x equals positive 5. That's what it can't be. Remember, that's how that works. So how's that going to change my domain for this function? And all it's going to do is make this a less than and not equal to 5 at the end. And there's your domain for that last one. Alright, we're almost done. I am looking at some graphic ones now. The last piece is graphic. Looking at graphs, how does this work? I want to know what f plus g of 2 is. I have an f function, that's the parabola looking thing. And I have a g function that's this pointing little thing. So I want to know what f, of, f plus g of 2 is. So in other words, what's f of 2 plus g of 2? Alright, so I go to the f function. I find 2. The corresponding y value is 0, so f of 2 equals 0. 
g of 2 is negative 1. And if I have 0 plus a negative 1, I get negative 1. So f plus g of 2 is negative 1. If I go to f minus g of negative 1, I want to know what f of negative 1 is. Go to negative 1, f is 3. I want to know what g of negative 1 is. Well, g of negative 1 gives me negative 2. Hold on, there's a minus sign in there because I'm subtracting this subtraction sign, minus, and then a negative 2. That makes it 3 plus 2, so I end up with an answer of 5. If I go to the third one, g times f of 0. So g of 0 is 0. f of 0 is 4. 0 times 4 is 0 f divided by g, so f of negative 2, well f of negative 2 is 0, g of negative 2, negative 2, g is a negative 4. 0 over negative 4 is still 0. Alright, now we're fogging, we haven't fogged for a little bit. I'm taking g of 3, remember this is equivalent to f of g of 3. You start out with the g of 3, so let's figure out what that is. If I go to 3, my g function's in negative 1. So I ultimately want to know what f of negative 1 is. Go to negative 1, my answer is negative 2. And that's your answer for... Oh, wait a minute. Did I do that wrong? I did. g of 3, let me do 3. I wasn't at 3, was I? Hold on. Erasable pen. G of 3, start, try again. G of 3, if I'm at 3, my G is a negative 1, right? Negative 1. If I do F of negative 1, I'm up here. That's what the problem was. And F of negative 1 is a 3. And then the last piece they wanted us to do is make a table to figure out what F plus G would be. So I'm going to set this up like a table. X, and then what's the result when I take X? f plus g. And you can see that I've got coordinates here when x is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And that's what I'm going to put on my table. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Well, you already did f plus g of 2 right over here. You know that that answer is a negative 1. So down here, this is a negative 1. That'll be one less we have to do. And then we're just going to go through the table and see what we come up with here. So if I'm at negative 2, I'm over here. I'm taking the f coordinate, 0, and adding it with the g coordinate of negative 4. 0 plus negative 4 is negative 4. If I go to negative 1, my f function is 3. My g function is negative 2. 3 plus a negative 2 is 1. I go to 0. f function is 4, g function is 0, 4 plus 0 is 4. I go to 1. f function is 3, g function is negative 1, 3 plus a negative 1 is 2. And then the last one, 3. If I look at 3, my f function is negative 5, my g function is negative 1, Negative 5 plus negative 1 is a negative 6. And then the last thing they wanted us to do was to plot these points, to literally graph it. So if I plot these points, when x is negative 2, y is negative 4. Well, that one lines up with this coordinate right there. If I go negative 1, I get a positive 1. Well, that would be a coordinate right about there. 0, 4 actually comes up to the tippy top like this one does. Uh, 1, 2 would be right about here. 2, negative 1. And 3, negative 6. And so if I were to plot those points, they kind of look like that. I'll highlight it and make it pretty.
There it is. All right. So they were the problems that we looked at together. That leaves you with uh, numbers 1 through 14 that we didn't do uh, to work on. And we're also going to look at another worksheet on composite functions when we're together again tomorrow. So, section 4.3, operations of functions. There you go. We fogged and we goffed. And uh, we added, subtracted, multiplied, divided, and talked domains. I hope you have a great day, and uh, email me if you have any questions. See ya.